Are you looking to buy a home? Stay tuned, we'll talk about the most common mistakes buyers make when purchasing a home. This is Gamma Lee Sturgis, a broker with Sturgis Realty Group. And I'm Alan Rios. I'm the realtor with Sturgis Realty Group. Thank you for watching and remember to help support our video channel by clicking like and subscribe. And don't forget every Thursday we're releasing a new video so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our videos. All right we got an interesting video for you today. The most common mistakes buyers make when it comes to purchasing a home. And this is something, Gamalier, that we come across quite often with people who are looking to buy a house. Yeah, unfortunately, we see this mistake happen all the time and we have people, buyers, that are looking to buy a home by themselves and commit a lot of these mistakes. But also, we have out there people that are not experienced agents that unfortunately commit yeah. a lot of these mistakes also with their clients. All right, so we'll start off with number one, the not getting pre-approved before looking to buy a house. This is something that we see quite often, you know, hey, they, they want to buy a house that has all the things that they dream of and sometimes they can't afford that, right? Yeah, and obviously the number one mistake is that they start looking at property way ahead of time and then find out that they can't even qualify for that home because it's too expensive, it's not in their budget. But also a lot of times what happens is that they start looking for a home, they want to make an offer on something now they're going to get that pre-approval. By the time they get that pre-approval letter, the house is on the contract. Yeah, and let's differentiate between pre-approval and pre-qualification. Pre-qualification, you can just call up the bank and just tell them, hey, I make X amount of dollars, and they'll write you up a letter stating how much home you can buy. Versus pre-approval, you actually have to turn in some documentation. So you've got some hard documentation there, and that stands out much better when it comes to putting an offer in a home. Yeah, definitely. So that's very important. Number two, not taking advantage of the first time home buyer programs. Yeah, so this is key too because uh, there are programs out there for first time home buyers that can actually save you some money, Gamaler. Definitely. This, uh, this FHA, obviously, which is 3.5% yeah. down, they have good rate plus a low down payment. Then you have a great conventional program if you could qualify with good credit which is 3% down. It's, it's one of the best programs out there. Yeah. And you have some programs which are 100% financed and with zero down also. Yeah, so depending on what your budget is like, they have different programs to kind of fit your needs out there. And one thing that I see a lot is that people make the mistake of using all their money, all their savings, and pl putting them into a yes, program you thinking, don't want to do that. thinking that, oh, I want to use all my money, keep the payment down. Uh, but the mistake is that they use all their money and now something happened with the house they had to fix and they depleted all their savings. So make sure when you're buying a home that you're smart about using a good program and keeping some savings also. Yeah, you don't want to go deeply into debt, right, when it comes to buying a house. All right, number three, life changes when purchasing a home. There's a lot of changes that happen, obviously, but the most important is when you're going through the home buying process, you don't want to make sure that you change job. Make sure you yeah. keep your job because that could decline that already approved that you have, approval. And also make sure that you don't do any major expenses like buying a car. Yep. Obviously that hurts Racking your debt credit card debt. Credit card, getting any, uh, people ask me, I want to buy furniture already. No, hold up, wait a minute yeah. and make sure People get excited. Anything. Yeah. yeah, people get excited. Yeah. Make sure you close, you have the keys in your hand and then go ahead and buy your car and do what you want to do. Yeah, so the message is keep things as is until we close on the house. Number four, not doing a home inspection. This is something I just don't understand why people, oh, yeah. you know, definitely don't go through that. And then like, you know, when you're doing a home inspection and you're doing no home inspection, you decide to do no inspection, obviously you, what you're technically doing is buying a home as is. And yeah. you're pretty much what's going to happen it's is like walking in a house blindfold again. Really, right? Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's pretty much you're going to have surprises. Believe me, when you hire an inspector, you're not only looking at uh, the foundation, they're looking at the roof, you're looking at electrical plumbing, all the major items, but it's also looking at the cosmetic and everything. And the good realtor is able to negotiate that. Not only is he going to be able to negotiate, maybe get you some credit to repair, or maybe sure. having that whole roof uh, change. But also, if there's too many things in there that so, the home needs too much. There's a chance you can get out of that deal too. Right? And protect your money also and not get yes. into something that's going to be a nightmare. 
Exactly. So a home inspection is very, very important when it comes to very purchasing crucial. a home. All right, number five, not having a clear vision of the needs versus wants, Gamalir. And that's very important. A lot of people, when they come to me for the first time, they want to buy a home, they always I say, want I this, want this. I want that. Yeah. They come with the long list. Yeah. They will come with the best neighborhood. But <laughs> then we have to get to reality, right? Yeah. What is it that you need? What is it versus what you want? We're going through a list and look at everything that you need. And we try to put a particular neighborhood based on your budget. They're going to fit your needs and, and what you need more. And that way you could buy the best home and be in something that's only going to make you happy, but also fulfill your needs. Yeah. So that's something you want to do. Sit down with a realtor and make sure you can go over that with them and you can kind of narrow things down for you a little bit better. All right. Number six, not understanding all the costs that are involved when buying a home. And there are a lot of costs, right? That we have to kind of go over with the buyer. Yes, definitely. Obviously you have the closing costs. Uh, that's the one of the major closing costs for buyers. And that is run anywhere between three to 6% depending on the home. Then you have the down payment. Down payment that's that true. we talked about earlier could be anywhere between 3.5% and sometimes 0%. Yep. Sometimes could be a bigger down payment too. So understanding the cost is very, very important when you're buying a home because a lot of people already look into buying a home and then they look at their savings, they don't have enough. Yeah, and a lot of things that people don't realize too, you can get a gift as well from a family member that mm -hmm. might help you with the down payment or towards your purchase of your home. There's also grants out there as well, you know, mm -hmm. private companies that provide money or, or the, even the government. And then also something that people don't consider a 401k, especially if you're a first time home buyer, you can actually withdraw and put that money towards the purchase of a home. Yeah, and many times there's no penalty in your 401k when you're buying a home that is occupied first time home buyer. So take a look at your 401k, your company, ask them, and that may be something that you could use also. Yeah, that's key. Make sure you talk to your financial advisor about that so you avoid those penalties. Mm -hmm. All right, number seven, understanding of all the contingencies. There's a lot of contingencies out there. You know, we've got uh, financial contingency, appraisal contingency, and also due diligence. Those are all key there, Gamalin. Very, very important because that protects your earnest money and your money. A lot of times also protects you from being sued to or getting into a situation where you need to get out the contract for a situation appraisal coming too low. Uh, so also help you negotiate the deal also and it saves you thousands of dollars. And now with the selling market, people, what they do, a lot of buyers out there, uh, they Just to get that edge. waiving all yeah. the contingency and you got to make sure that you know what you're doing. Yeah. So just don't start waiving contingency without making a plan and knowing and knowing the condition, everything of the property, because that could cost you a lot of money and it could become a nightmare. So contract negotiation, contingency, very important. Yeah. You don't want to lose your earnest money. That's key right there. I mean, you're putting a down payment towards the purchase of your house and that will be gone. Number eight, not hiring an experienced buyer agent. That is key to avoid all of these mistakes that we're talking about, yes. right, Pamela? Yes, and here in the Sturgis Realty Group, obviously when we work with buyers, we're gonna do a, a consultation, and obviously our service as a buyer is completely free, doesn't cost you anything, yeah. and obviously we're gonna help you all the way through from finding the best loan, from finding the property, to looking at negotiating the contract, making sure it's a smooth transaction, and it's, it's a, that you will have fun with the transaction, and you're gonna have a great experience. That's very important. All right. Number eight, nine, buying new construction without a buyer agent. That's something that we see a lot. And obviously what happened is because of uh, builders build their own the subdivision, obviously their new subdivision, everything, you come in to look at it and you met with the rep, which he's actually the one who's representing the builder and he's not going to represent you anyway. So you want to make sure that you have a buyer agent who's going to also represent you and help you through the whole transaction. But also very important is you got to make sure that you do the right inspection through the whole process when they're building your property and don't find any surprises. There's a lot of things that happen in construction, believe me. Yes. In new construction, I mean, you can come across some of the same problems with a resale home. So you definitely want to go through the process and making sure you get that home inspection. Number 10, not negotiating major repairs and not doing a walkthrough. And that's a really big one. I see a lot of times that when the inspection comes in, we talk about earlier, you have all these items. A lot of people focus on little items versus the big items, major items, and you want to negotiate, obviously, the best things in the contract and get the most. 
but also make sure biggest mistake that people do is they don't do a walkthrough. They believe the seller did all these repairs That's right, and important. everything. I have been in a situation I go to a home and the water, the home is floated because a plumbing broke yeah. right before closing. Imagine a buyer closing in a home, getting the key, getting home, and they open the door, you have a float in your home. Sure, you just wanna make sure all those repairs that you requested to get fixed are done. Mm -hmm. And you just wanna walk through, just make sure that, you know, when the seller moves out, that there is not any damage done to the house as That's well. That's correct. All right, so number 11, not verifying credit score and correcting your mistakes. And that's a big one. Not knowing your credit could cost yeah. you a lot of money. And like people realize, everybody that I talk to have great credit, have great credit, then they go and pull their credit and realize that they had a medical bill, that they made a mistake. And if you were to clear that earlier, you would have got a better interest rate and be in a better position. But sometimes also happen where you have buyers that don't know that much about their credit and surprise and find out that they can't their credit is not that well that they need to fix it so well by verifying before you're able to fix your credit work on it and obviously you could do it yourself sure. sometimes or you could hire a professional to help you but credit is very important it's one of the first questions i ask a buyer is what is their credit score and that's where you need to start when it comes to purchasing a home and number 12 looking more at neighborhoods and schools a lot of people don't realize when you move into a neighborhood you're taking it all in, right? Yes, obviously the house comes with the neighborhood and the neighborhood and school. Obviously it's important if you have families and kids to be in the best school program that you could get. That here in the Georgia area, Atlanta area, metro area, in most areas around the United States, if you, the higher the ranking of the school, the higher the price of the yes. home. Yeah. But in those cases where you're young or you're not planning to have kids, and first that's not buyer. first time home buyer, yeah and you know you don't need such a school then you can also still get the benefits of the neighborhood mm -hmm. move a block away from the school system area being another school system but still get the benefits of the neighborhood yeah. and don't pay such a high price so keep that in mind when you're buying a home all right gamma there was a lot of common mistakes we went over there and hopefully this video will help you from making those mistakes when you're looking to buy a home and most importantly make sure you hire an experienced buyer agent that will take you from beginning to closing yeah, if you need any help regarding buying a home with either someone here in the local area of Metro Atlanta or you're coming out of state, we'll love to help you out and make sure to avoid this mistake and help you to have a nice transaction. So feel free to reach us. We're here to help you whenever you have a question about real estate. All right, take care. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good day.